Hi, welcome to a brand new video of the Target Individual Experience, the Target Individual Program. So I love how they get butt hurt when I call them out on their bullshit. Okay, and I'm gonna show you in this post that somebody posted, I responded, and the response that they gave back. Okay, and then I'm gonna elaborate on this stuff. So, this person wrote, um, Every brother in righteous, though they may be religious in some aspect, docile and gullible. See, people say a lot of things, but they don't think deeply. You know, because they've been taught the surface of things, meaning they've been taught what have been instructed them to learn, Right? So when I look at something like this, you know, my mind goes to say, okay, you're talking about every brother in righteous. But that that's this is again, this is uh, a word righteous, righteousness that is used as a, a religious indoctrinated word. Okay. And for the religious people, being in righteousness is like a double edged sword. And let me explain that. When they say that they're righteous, it's supposed to mean that they're doing right by their belief system. Okay? So, for example, the Bible says in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, uh, covet thy neighbor's uh, property, um, thou shalt not make grave images uh, of, of God or what have you, or worship uh, grave images or what have you. Um, <clears throat> you know that those those things, right? But yet, the majority of people commit murders or Christians, or religious people, whether they be Christian, Muslim, or what have you. Those are the vast majority. Okay, the vast majority of people who cheat during their marriage are Christians, particularly Christians. Okay, the vast majority of people who steal and lie are religious believers. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my response. Okay, <laughs> let me do this. Let me, let me go to my comment, my comment section here. So I said, here's a question: What is righteousness? Is it righteous to destroy a people for the sake of your God? Is it righteous to steal a person's creation and gain wealth because of it? Is it righteous to secretly destroy the lives of the life of, of individuals because they don't believe in your religion? Are these things righteous? Because when the religious believers do these things, they believe they are doing a righteous thing. When the white supremacists do these things, they believe that they are doing a righteous thing. So people will commit evil, okay, and because of their belief system. They think that doing something that's righteous. Hitler believed he was doing a righteous thing. King Leopold believed he was doing not only a righteous thing, but also in which he can get away with being who he truly is, which is a serial killer, a psychopath. See, they all believe that doing a righteous thing. See, words like that, I don't use in my vocabulary because I know it doesn't mean anything. And when people are delusional about their belief of what righteousness is, they can commit all acts of crimes against another individual and get away with it. Because you know why? They can always ask for forgiveness and they'll believe that Jesus or God is going to, believe, going to forgive them. So their conscience is clear afterwards. So listen to his response. So he goes, however you see it for you, to you be your way and mine be my way. Who I am to judge your school of thought. Then he puts black. And remember I talk about how they use the color black, right? In terms of my targeting. Um, like in terms of, especially now they, how they transfer it, that trigger and anchor to Pam now. You know, so... They hit a, a knocking up off again. Every time, every time the word black or mention Pam, 
they don't do the knocking. It's been going on all day. So anyway, I try to, you know, just ignore it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just really annoying. Okay. So he goes, I stand alone on my square. But again, you see when people believe a certain things and they, they're confronted with an answer or a, um, a different way of looking at things, how the, dis the cognitive dissonance kicks in, okay? And just to put things into more context, um, hold on a sec, I'm going to pull up something that I want you guys to, to see. Okay, so here's an article, it's called um, How Criminals Use Religion to Justify Their Crimes, okay? So it's the story. The researchers have found that many hardcore criminals anticipate an early death, making them less prone to delay gratification, more likely to discount the future course of crime, and thus more likely to offend. Ironically, many such offenders also hold strong religious conviction, including those related to the punitive afterlife consequences of offending. To reconcile these findings, researchers from Georgia State University interviewed 48 active street offenders to determine their expectation and an early demise belief in the afterlife annotations of redemption and punishment. Now, this is not going to also be related to criminals, but people who have not been, let's say, uh, put into the criminal justice system, right, but they still commit crimes, they just get away with it. Okay, or they do it for us as TIs, they do it in a psychological way, way to where they get away with it, right? And then they can, at night, they can close their eyes and ask God for forgiveness, and they're forgiven and come at the same, the next day, and psychologically torture, harass you, poison your food, destroy your property, spread rumors about you, all these things, right? So it's always a cycle, right, that goes on every day in their mind. Because at the end of the night, they ask for forgiveness, and they, because they've been told that Jesus is going to forgive them, or just ask for it, then that's all the excuse they need. Very, very similar personality in terms of that sense to these criminals who are religious. Okay? So, the background, the researchers found that despite the different effects of religion that have been highlighted in prior research, their results indicate that religion may be a counterintuitive effect in certain contexts of encouraging or supporting criminal behavior. As they note in the paper's abstract, though purposeful uh, distortion or genuine ignorance, the hardcore offenders we interviewed are able to exploit the uh, solvatory tenets of religious doctrine, neutralizing their fear of death and to not only allow but encourage offending. The researchers found some of the cause to be incomplete understanding to the precepts, rules, and expectation of their fate. For instance, Q, an 18-year-old male robber said, Q, I believe in God and the Bible and stuff. I believe in Christmas and, uh, you know, the commitments and whatnot. <laughs> Interviewer, you mean the commandments. Q. Yeah, that. I believe in that. Can you name any of them? Q. Uh, well, I don't know. Like, don't steal and uh, don't cheat and explicit, you know, whatever. Leave it like that. Mm. I can't remember the rest. Interview. How about the Bible? Yeah, I know some of that. You know, heaven and hell and Jesus fighting with the devil. But for real, I don't really go to church enough to know, uh, like, all the details. Just the important. Explicit. Delete. Like Jesus forgives you for all your bad, explicit, deleted, if you donate some money to the church and pray and say you're sorry, okay? When the researchers pointed out to Trigger Man, a 33-year-old enforcer and hitman of local drug dealers in New Orleans, that the transitional penalty for murder was uh, external damnation, a crime he has committed, his response was, no, 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 I don't think that is right. I mean, anything can be forgiven. We live in hell now, and you can't do anything. Transgression in hell, uh, when it all ends, 
we go up there to heaven and the devil comes down here. Only the devil lives in hell. However, man by himself, God has to forgive everyone, even if they don't believe in him. Really. I understand the mind of, of those individuals, right? And so again, they use the, the belief in their religion. They, will, they always have the that option of asking God for forgiveness and they're forgiven. These are like the perps that attack us, that do all these things to us, right? At night, they go to bed, they pray for forgiveness, what have you, they come back the next day and it starts all over again, okay? So, you know, it's an interesting article. You guys can read it. I'm not going to go through the, the whole thing of, of it, but so when they talk about righteousness, right? The people who are committing crimes in the name of religion think that they're doing righteous things, though they're committing crime. And yet, yes, they can go, at night go to bed and ask for forgiveness. And they, and that's it. They believe that God's going to forgive them, that Jesus is going to forgive them. They don't hear Jesus saying, I forgive you. And it's because of what they read in the Bible. Okay? And they tend to, to not understand the reason why those things were written. Those things were written simply because during the during slavery, the beginning of slavery, okay, with this new version of the Christian Bible, those things were put in there so that those who were enslaving others and who were brutalizing them, murdering them, can have a clear conscience of all the evil that they're doing just by asking God for forgiveness. Okay? So, again, I understand that oh, this is, this, there was an interesting part here that I, that I wanted to um, bring up. Okay? <laughs> it's about the so I can find it here. All right, so let's talk about this, right? It, with this uh, this young male drug dealer he says, the way it works is this: you go out and do something bad, and then you ask for forgiveness, and you just have to forgive you, and you know wipe the state clean. So. I already do a quick little prayer right before and then I'm cool with Jesus. Also, another thing is this. If you're going, if you're doing wrong to another bad person, like if I go rob a dope dealer or a molester or, some, or something, then it don't count against me because it's like I'm giving punishment to them for Jesus. That's God will. Or you molest some kid, you know, I'm God sending cool over your house to get your expert deleted now let me let me <laughs> ask this the priests the, those priests that was molesting thousands of young boys those priests and nuns that murdered thousands of indigenous children all across the planet okay the Anybody like that went and commit crimes against them? See, I, like I said, you religious keeps your mind binded and it keeps you with tunnel vision. Okay? Because those parents of those children that were molested by the the priests, the nuns, or even listed the nuns who were who were, who were sometimes raped by the priest, impregnated by the priest. At the end of the day, they can get on their knees and pray to God and Jesus for forgiveness and they're forgiven. Understand the mentality of the perps that are targeting us, those people that are doing this to us as, you know, as TIs. Understand their mentality, their personality. Okay, it is a criminal mentality and a criminal aspect of their belief system 
but because they think they're doing something that's righteous and they can get on their knees and pray to God that they can that they can be okay with it. So it's not like I said, so it's no problem when the Vatican gets together with Hitler and and bless all the weapons, okay? Knowing that what he intended to do with it. It's okay when you have these pastors and, you know, on the police force or, uh, uh, you know, these religious fanatics on the police force talking about the door and our God's justice, our God's will. Because as a black person, as a black man, I know that they look at me as being some criminal regardless of whether I am or not. So how are they doling on God's will? But then I think, aha, uh -huh. God do let these things happen because in the Bible, what did God do? He drowned his creation because he couldn't foresee what they were going to do. But yet, God is all seeing and God is all knowing. He ordered Moses to let the Philistine kill his people. Why? Because they were committed, they were committing what the Ten Commandments, the laws of the Ten Commandments, one of, uh, one of the laws, right? The building a grave image. But how would they know that I was against the commandments when Moses was up in the mountain talking to a burning bush? Again, another silly thing that people really believe. So how would they know that that was part, that was uh, against the commandment because Moses hadn't come down from the mountain yet? See, those are things that religious people don't think about. Okay? So I'm just going to do one more thing and then <laughs> I'm going to uh, end this video. All right. Okay. So I'm back and I want you guys to see the disconnect with religious believing. This is why they can continue to do what they do to us. All right. In a way in, in the manner in which they, they do. Okay. There's a disconnect from reality. There's a disconnect from common sense. There's a disconnect from, uh, you know, their so-called moral beliefs, right? So this is an article from uh, October uh, 20, 2021, last year. And it says, in the U.S., far more support than oppose separation of church and state. This is why you see now infiltration of these Christian, you know, fanatics, okay, being elected into the U.S. government, right? And particularly during the Trump era, we saw what a disaster that was. Okay? So, let's go into this. Okay? And the thing is, it says, most Americans oppose declaring Christianity and any other religion as official fate of U.S. I'm not going to read the... Um, the graph that's here, not really a graph, but you know, the um, this chart, right? So, the First Amendment to the United States Constitution states that the country shall have no official religion. At the same time, Christians continue to make up a large majority of U.S. adults, despite some rapid decline in recent years. The, and historians, politicians, and religious leaders continue to debate the role of religion in the founding vision of Christianity in the nation's identity. Now, again, why is there a debate? It is clear when the so-called founding fathers of the United States, okay, they didn't found the, you know, um, you know the, country, the, the, the continent has been here, the country, the land has been here. You just created the United States or what have you, all right? Um, that one of the things they understood and they understood this because they looked at what happened in England, in France, right? In other countries. When you have religion at the head 
of those countries, particularly countries that have monarchies. And they saw what a disaster it was. And so that's why they, they put that Congress should make no laws regarding and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, a person's uh, religious belief into where that they cannot hold political office or office within the U.S. government. All right. And then clearly they put they they have they put in the Constitution a separation between church and state. But these people who like to talk about the Constitution was, um, you know, inspired by God. Well, if that was the case, then why did God allow them to put se separation of church and state in the Constitution? And now they want to change it. Are you saying that God make made a mistake? And so now you're going to correct it? You know, again, this is the sort of thinking that you got to <laughs> open your mind to. Because right? these people are religious fanatics and they, when it comes to common sense and, and know-how, you know, when it, in terms of understanding the United States Constitution, what the so-called founding fathers meant, and it's clear. Okay? Separation between church and state. But these people want to undo that. And this is the exact reason why they put that in the Constitution, because they understood from from past, you know, examples, the disaster that will happen. And we saw it again within the Trump presidency. OK. So. Uh, some Americans clearly long for a more avowedly religious and explicitly explicit explicitly explicitly sorry explicitly christian country according to a march 221 pew research center survey for instance three in ten says public school teachers should be allowed to lead student in christian prayer, prayers a practice that the supreme court ruled unconstitutional roughly one in five say that the federal government should stop enforcing the separation of church and state right 19% and that the U.S. Constitution was inspired by God, 80% and 15% goes as far as to say the federal government should declare the U.S. a Christian nation. But the U.S. was never founded on any sort of Christian or religious principles. These people like to make up their own shit because of their religion. And this is what I'm trying to get people to understand. That they're so indoctrinated with lies and delusion. This is why they behave in the manner in which they behave. And as T.S., we should understand that. Okay? On the other hand, the clear majority of Americans do not accept these views. For example, two-thirds of the U.S. adults, 67%, and thank goodness for that, said the Constitution was written by humans and reflect their vision, not necessarily God's vision. And a similar share, 69%, said the government should never declare any official religion. Respondent were offered the opportunity to reply neither no opinion in response to each question. A substantial shares choose this option or decline to answer in response to uh, again they, they love to bang and drop stuff on the floor when I when I'm reading certain things, right? So for example they talk about options, you know, kinda like they like to hear it again option and they like to uh, you know they make you feel like they're giving you choices right <laughs> you know like in, you know they'll try to send me some little message or um you, you know make the right choice you know all this bullshit okay I'm, I'm making my choice for me all right that's what i'm making and what's good for what's good for me just like everybody else make choice of what's good for them Okay, you can't make you, you get tired of making choices what's good for other people while you know they continue to disrespect and and um treat you like you're insignificant. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me continue. And substantial shares, and now they go back with the Hunger Game theme again. <laughs> okay, uh. Uh, so as a truth option or decline to answer in response to all these questions, suggesting some 
uh, ambivalence amongst a segment of the population. Perhaps not surprisingly, the survey find that Christians are much more likely than Jewish or religious unaffiliated Americans to express support for the integration of church and state, while white evangelicals, Protestants, foremost among Christian subgroups in this area. In addition, Christians who are highly religious are especially likely to say, for example, that the Constitution was inspired by God. But even among white evangelical Protestant and highly religious Christians, fewer than half said the United States should abandon its uh, adherence to the separation of church and state. It's 34% and 31% respectively or declare the country a Christian nation, 35% and 29%. Politics is also a major factor. Republicans and those who learn, lean, those who lean towards the Republican Party are far more likely than Democrat or Democrat leaners to want to secure a official place for Christianity in the nation's identity. However, for the most part, Republicans do not directly voice a preference for the integration of church and state. For instance, 58% of Republican and Republican leaders said the federal government should never declare any religion as the official religion in the United States, while a quarter of Republicans, 26%, say that the government should declare the U.S. a, a Christian nation. By comparison, the 